What is going on guys, I'm Shane from Rocket Powered Sound. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to make this insane rhythm bass in Serum, and this is what it sounds like. Slay them all. Isn't that crazy? If you guys like that sound, make sure you consider clicking that like button if you haven't already. And if you guys are wondering where those, where what, where those vocals came from, they actually came straight from our pack that we're releasing Friday. It's five vocal packs for five dollars. So stick around till Friday, and I promise you, I will be giving you guys five vocal packs for only five dollars on real deal. So you guys don't want to miss that. It's going to be a limited time kind of thing here. Uh, I just want to give you guys as most the, as, as much value as I can. I can't talk today, but anyways, let's get right into this sound the sound is very cool um, but believe it or not it's actually not too difficult to make so all you have to do to make this sound really heavy is add in some drums and maybe some vocals and stuff and there you go you have a rhythm bass right or a rhythm song <laughs> so anyways all jokes aside all we're gonna be doing here is we're going to start off with our LFO shape I know this time I'm starting off with the LFO shape because um, normally I, I start messing around with the oscillators and stuff, but today we just want to start off shaping our sound. So let's just imagine for a sec the sound we want. It wants to go whoa, 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 whoa. All right, that's what that's what it sounded like in the demo, which sounded really good. So I have a couple variations because you know in a rhythm it could sound a little bit boring if we have the same thing going on. So we gotta you know spice it up a little bit, throw in some variations. So it goes uh, just basic triangle wave. Oh shoot crazy stuff here right <laughs> so it's on trigger and one fourth rate so we're not going to touch the lfo until we start modulating but let's get into the modulation process might as well right so oscillator a we're going to go into our basic shapes and we're going to select our sawtooth waveform now that's that's all it looks like just a basic down saw and we're going to turn up our fm from oscillator b Oh my gosh, what is happening? There's no FM, what is happening? <laughs> so obviously oscillator B isn't turned on, so we're not intercepting any frequencies. So there we go, we have to turn on oscillator B. Now since the sound is gonna be outputted and oscillator A is running the host, so it's all gonna be running through oscillator A, we don't really need to have oscillator B on. It's just gonna cause unnecessary sounds and unnecessary feedback on the sound. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go to our analog basic shapes once again, and we're gonna go into our triangle waveform, that's gonna be the waveform, but back to what I was saying, we're gonna drop that level all the way down to zero. And that, we really get this weird harmonic, um, inharmonic I should say sound. We're gonna turn up the octave one. Boom, inharmonic for days. So uh, first things first, we're going to be modulating the level of oscillator A. So all we have to do is drop the level down to zero, and we're gonna turn on our LFO shape that we just created onto there. So right there, we create our basis for the sound. Okay, so sounds decent. Um, one thing that we are gonna do, just a little bit more spice on it, cause you know, we, we added up a little bit of spice with the LFO, but it needs a little bit more spiciness. So we're gonna turn up the sync. Make it sound a little bit more harmonic, and we're going to turn on our LFO onto here. This is going to mess with the tune quite a bit. Just take a listen. Sounds kind of cool. So you guys can start to hear where we're heading with this sound. Brings us right into the filter now. So into the filter, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to what we're going into our flanges. We're going to select our flanger HL6 positive flanger. Okay. So we're actually not gonna be turning on keyboard tracking. I know normally when I'm using the flanger filter, we don't actually turn on the keyboard uh, tracking. I mean, we, I'm sorry, I, we usually do turn on the keyboard tracking. That way the cutoff moves with whatever note that we are on because you know, relative to where you are on the keyboard, it's gonna sound completely different because we're cutting out different frequencies at different parts and adding them in and it sounds, it, it adds in different tones and depending on where your note is, that you're playing, that tone can clash with the tone of the filter and just not sound good. It's gonna sound very inharmonic and just like absolute shit. Now that's not what we want, but in this sound, believe it or not, we're actually going for that. So let's start to find our tone. We're gonna turn up our 
filter variation here. That way we have the full effect of the filter and we're going to turn down the cutoff. Okay, now one thing that we want to do here is we want to have drag between each note and we only want to be playing one note at once. So we're going to just turn on mono and legato and just turn that up. Slay them. Okay, so you guys can start to see where we're going with this. Now one thing that we are also going to do is we're going to modulate the resonance. So as we start to reach the peak of the sound here and the shapes, that's really where we want to harness all the sound all together. And that's what's really going to make it sound very heavy as well. So we're actually going to be doing the same thing with the mix. As you can hear, it kind of changes up the tone. It adds in the lower tones. And then we start to move into the higher tones as we move up, up the mix. Um, which is, that's it for the oscillator section. Let's take it right into the effects section. So first things first, we're actually gonna be distorting it a little bit. Turn up that drive all the way. Oh my gosh, that sounds disgusting. Wondering why? Because we're using tube distortion. We're gonna turn that to uh, soft clip. We can actually even use hard clip in this one. But I really like the way the soft clip distorts a little bit more. Um, next into the hyper dimension, we're just going to turn on the hyper mix a tad bit. Dimension to about 3, 2%, you know, 2%, that works. Uh, mix up a good amount. Compressor, we're going to turn this bad boy on. We're actually going to be turning on multiband, surprise, surprise. Slay them all. Now you're starting to be like, okay, we're getting there, but it doesn't sound quite rhythm-esque, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna be doing here that completely changes the game. We're gonna turn on our filter and we're actually gonna be going into our flanges, or no, it's on our mis miscellaneous, and we're gonna go into our combs. Let's turn that down a bit. Let's get around there. Now we're gonna turn up the resonance all the way and just take a listen. Well, almost all the way. Oh my gosh. Take a listen to that. It sounds like one of those heavy rhythm machine gun bases. Lay them all. Reverb doesn't hurt once in a while. Slay. Uh, we, I'm just gonna make a couple changes to the filter here. Slay. Slay them. Slay. Slay them all. Ah, fake news. All right, well, that's going to wrap up today's video. I don't even know why. I just get CNN notifications all the time. So get that hell out of here. Um, so that's going to wrap up today's video. Um, it's a pretty cool sound, right? If you guys like that sound, make sure you guys consider clicking that subscribe button if you haven't already, because if you're not subscribed, then what the hell are you doing? <sighs> oh my gosh. It's summer, baby.